neighborhood potlucks to people coming into the disaster center. It took us a long time to do that. We hired Pro Arts to lay out the design and a contractor through the Cultural Arts Department of the City of Oakland to install it. It was a huge project. We had to get BART's approval. We had to get an encroachment permit from Caltrans. And it is a piece of public art, okay? The first I heard of it was two days before the installation when I saw no parking signs on Keith for the trucks to bring the stuff in and I asked a few people and found out that, oh, it's going to go over to the Rockbridge Park somewhere. And then I started writing emails to ask about that. So that's how the issue came up. RCPC had not been consulted about this location. You may have had these three meetings, but I understand this location wasn't discussed, according to Stewart. Um, the Merchants District had no formal uh, presentation of it. Because I, I called around to everybody and emailed everybody and texted everybody. And, it, you know, and I said, please delay until we can figure this out. They said, no, no, we want to put it in, but they made the commitment that it would be temporary and that we'd find a new location at Rockbridge Bart. Rockbridge Bart's a huge property, and it's kind of, I mean, no offense to Steve or Bart, because I'm sure over the years this has evolved, but there are bike racks and bike lockers and other infrastructure, billboards and other things, and benches here and there. Yes. Probably a master plan was done back in the 60s when it was put in, or maybe not. But, you know, there's another bike rack which has been ruled out as a location um, that's behind the escalator area. Um, and nobody parks their bikes there. It's completely vacant of bikes. I think I saw one bike there one day. Probably because people feel their bikes can get stolen or damaged well, in that location. That, that wasn't ruled out because of the bike rack. It was ruled out because there wasn't enough actual... Okay, well, the it doesn't system. matter really why it was ruled out. All I, all, my point was not that it was ruled out. My point was more that that location, which you can't really see, it's really to the left of there, is an underutilized spot. Maybe more of those bike cages could go over there, you know, the lockers or yes. some other thing. But my issue is not that you can't walk up to the wall. That is not the issue that I have. My issue is when you're driving down the street, riding your bike, when you're a pedestrian, right before this went in, the wall was there. There was no obstruction in front of the wall except the columns from the freeway that have always been there, okay? Yeah. We knew that when we put the wall in. And you'd never think about, you know, the oh. Vietnam Memorial, you'd never think about putting bike share in front of the Vietnam Memorial wall. Because you want to see, and you know, maybe that's not good for some people. I didn't make that analogy up, somebody else did, but you want to see the extent of the thousands of names that are on that wall. Not just the one name that you go to look for. Okay, it's the impact. There's 2,100 and some odd tiles on that wall, and it's the impact of seeing the visual portion. And that's the main area with the placard. That's where we hold all the events. We just had the 25th anniversary, which was in one of those slides. You know, it's respect. Okay, so it's not, a lot of people have commented on next door and here and there. You can walk up to it. What's the big deal? Or, like you said, you know, and I understand, you didn't really look at it that much and pay that much attention until this issue came up. But lots of people in this community have been here a long time and have really connected with the wall and do feel that it's a sacred place. It's not that people of hundreds of them a day are going by, but for what they're doing, you know, they see it, they know it, they can go by when they feel like it. We have families that go by there and see their loved ones' tiles, their remembrances on the wall. Um, so that's, that's my concern, and the site has these other options that are excellent options. Um, so, you know, I know they did a survey, and I'm sure a lot of people who didn't live here or don't know what happened or don't really understand the depth of it, because I keep calling it a view shed. It's the view shed that's impaired. And that is my, I'm the one that raised all these issues, okay? Me, myself, and I. Okay, and then a lot of people chimed in when they heard this was happening. Um, and I'm really glad for Bart and the city to say, this is temporary, we're going to reassess. Yes, there are other, I really appreciate Steve, because Steve is the only one who has been in this whole thing since the beginning with bike share. Because the city bike share person, Carlos, left right when it was being implemented. Then it was passed over to Michael, who's an excellent, excellent city manager. Um, then Kirby was hired. So there hasn't been any real continuity except Steve 
and which is excellent that he came out and he's been willing to basically handhold me through all these different options. So I'm hoping that one of these options resonates for people. You'll still have the bikes there. And I think once you know that there's a bike share at the station, and they could put a sign inside the station and say, bike share station, you know, and where it is, you know, people who want to use it are going to find it at the station. It's not that big. Yeah. I really appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Thank you. Because um, that wasn't clear from what I had read so far about sort of what the, the worry or the issue was about the current location. And, you know, I, I hope it is helpful for you to hear that as, and, you know, I've lived in Rockridge for three years, but I've lived in the general area for five, so I'm not, I mean, I'm new, but, you know, I hope this place is trying to welcome newcomers. Of course. And, um, of course. and, and uh, I really, like, I, I have appreciated the mural more since the bike share has been there. Um, and I, I very much hear what you're saying, and also I hope for, it's helpful for you to hear wherever it ends up, and, you know, going that, like, for some people, actually, the mural is being, you know, more appreciated, more noticed. I have a, you know, more under better understanding of history and, sure. you know, how how everything um, happened for people here, you know, because of the bike share being close to the mural. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, we've heard that from a lot of people. Yeah. Real quick, can there be half on one uh, the west side and half on the east side? Why do you have one long thing? Why uh, aren't riders interested to go in both directions? That's a business decision on the part of the operator motivate. It, it's considerably more expensive to both install and maintain two separate um, pods, two separate dock units than one. So going going way back, kind of even before Kirby slides, this is the bike share is a business. They are a for-profit company. They have an agreement with the MTC and with the five cities. Um, they have a, a major sponsor with Ford, a secondary sponsor with Alaska. It's uh, millions of dollars worth of private investment supporting a, a sort of a public good um, service. So it's their business decision, and, and they're very hesitant to do the two pods. I'd like to point out your pie chart showing that 49% of the people mm -hmm. wanted where it is, yep. and 21 to here, 21 to there. Mm -hmm. but in reality, 51% wanted it moved. Yep. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, so we have a plurality, not a, um, you know, you know, a majority. That. I mean, if you eliminated the last choice and let people vote again, one of those, or two of those people might vote. You know, <laughs> right? you know, those are main choices. And then your argument goes away. That's also a good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll start my angel with on the head of that um, <laughs> how many bikes are held and are able to be held in the current uh, cages? The cages or the oh, you mean the cages, the lockers, or the You're station at, for Bart's cages. I don't know what you mean by cages. Do you mean the the, the stainless steel lockers? Yes, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, I think we have 84 spaces at Rockbridge. 84 in those. So they're in three different locations. There, there's some on the um, uh, on the east side, and then there's I, I said some on the west side near um, uh, adjacent to the um, memorial wall, uh, north of it. And then there are two groups on the um, on the east side as well. I've only known of the ones at the foot of the stairway coming down on the yeah. west side. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. They're they're actually very very well utilized. We have a little extra capacity there, which is kind of my goal at all of our stations yeah. to always have a little extra capacity. I, I want to encourage people to bicycle, and I don't want them to be afraid that they're not going to get a locker when they get there. So how many more people do you think would use those kinds of storage spaces for their bikes if that ID area were budgeted for... Uh, uh, at the moment, none. Like I said, we, we currently have excess capacity. Yeah. Long-term plan, we have what's called a bike station on the on the books for, for Rockridge, which would go actually in that area um, where there are some underutilized bike racks. Uh, I, I don't want to go into a long explanation, but a, a bike station is an access controlled um, group parking facility, so it, it, it's a room or a fenced in area, uh, and you have to have an access card to get in and out, and then you lock your bike inside. We have them at seven or eight other stations. We install those when we basically run out of space for racks and lockers, and the demand for bike parking um, kind of exceeds what we can do on our, on our own real estate. Kirby, one, one other thing, you, you pointed out that there were two reasons, two of the reasons why the Keith Avenue was not, the two of the reasons that it wasn't a great idea mm -hmm. was because of the rideshare 
you know, the, the Uber and Lyft mm -hmm. illegal pick up and drop off. Yeah. Um, so that issue should, I think, be pulled out of here because really they are illegal. And I think between the city and BART, you need to find a location. The taxi cab stand on college is no longer used by taxi cabs. I have not seen a taxi cab on college where it says taxi stand for a yeah. long, long time. And what they've done is they've you've moved the taxis on that inside driveway right. by the escalators, and that's where they all hang out. So maybe you can make that a Lyft and Uber drop off and pick up area on college, or vice versa, because you know, people are going to continue the illegal drop-offs because they don't want to pull in the bus stop and get the $250 ticket or whatever yeah, it is. So, so we are evaluating curb uses at, at quite a few stations, and, and this one yeah. in, in particular. Um, it, this is a really constrained spot, and yet th there's, we're not sanctioning that city property. It's not a BART decision, what, right. what happens right there. But um, we're not telling the Uber and Lyft folks to use that spot. Oh, I know. They, they're doing it because it works. Well, they're doing it because there's no other place that's not a yeah. red zone or a bus stop. Yeah, well, other than that taxi zone that you were describing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have that on there not because you don't want to displace the Uber and Lyft, but more just because it would be dangerous for bike sharing. Right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing it out as, an, as a potential issue. So. It's an issue, but it's an issue that we all need to resolve. But, but we, yeah, we station. pulled this out as a location because we're more than happy to displace Uber and Lyft and, and put the bike share here if, if that's what worked best for everybody. Yeah. I mean, the bike driver's just thinking, you can't really control where Uber and Lyft go, and I'd be worried <laughs> about that space because it's danger. Not yeah. because I'd be like, oh, I don't want to get in their way, but more because we're, like, We actually uh, aren't trying to control where Uber and Lyft go, and we're, we're in negotiations with them so that, that they can have, have some areas that are, are basically red curve where they, they're driving drivers aren't allowed to pick up, but it's so it's happening it's happened so quickly and it's such a huge phenomena, it's it's a little hard for us to get our get our hands around it this quickly. Yeah. So where do things stand at this point? Um, at this point we are we are collecting your input. Yeah. So the the in essence then this that's that's your that's what you've got so far. That's what we've got. Um, and yeah, we have the, the verbal feedback we received at the site visit, um, the verbal feedback we got at the last meeting. Um, we have our survey results, um, and we have emails that people have sent us. And, and when would they, when would a decision get made, or at least a tentative decision get made? I hope we can do that sometime in the next few weeks. Yeah, yeah I, I think after this meeting we, we feel like we have good input uh, and, and that we can move forward with I want to ask a question which is quite different here. Um, the, the bike share that you have is a dock bike share, right? You're not going to ask about dockless bike share, are you? I sure am. <laughs> I was and, and, and the reason I'm going to ask about it is because it seems to me that the city has made a decision of going with the dock system. Uh, Alameda and other cities have made a decision that they're going with a line bike, which is the dockless mm -hmm. system. It seems as though they, the so they're all in a pilot stage. No city right. has actually chosen to go with a dockless system yet. Okay, that's good. So uh, could you in Oakland decide that maybe let a thousand flowers bloom? and allow both. I understand Bart has got some concerns with it. That would have to be addressed. But the reason I'm saying that is because bicycles really uh, are able to do something very important, and that is solve the last mile problem. And the problem with a dot bike program is that you've got to return it to another dock. Whereas with a dockless system, it would be at least possible to arrange an overnight situation where somebody could park at his or her dwelling and then ride back the next morning, eliminating the need for the lockers, yeah. el eliminating the need for the possibility uh, that somebody is worried that they're going to be stolen. So it seems to me as though maybe this has been a little premature in Oakland, San Francisco, to go exclusively with the system, why don't you at least, on a pilot program, consider a 
to uh, approach the doc in the doc list. Uh, I know you might have some contract arrangements with Motivate, uh, and I don't know what the legalities are, but I just offer that for a suggestion. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's a great question. So to give a little bit of background, the station-based bike share has been around for, I think, about 12 years or so, 13 years. So um, a couple cities on the East Coast started this whole thing, Montreal, Paris was really early, New York City. Um, took Oakland a while to get on the bike share bike train. Um, <laughs> but we passed our bike share policy in 2015, and at that point started the negotiations for creating this system. At that time, there was no dockless bike share. Mm -hmm. It didn't exist. It wasn't an option that the city considered because mm -hmm. no one was offering it. Um, we signed a 10-year exclusive franchise agreement with Motivate to operate uh, bike share here in Oakland, as, well, as the same thing that San Francisco, Emeryville, Berkeley did, and the same agreement they entered into. So subsequently, right after we launched our program, all these dockless bike share companies uh, emerged out of somewhere, and they <laughs> started providing um, very similar service, um, but without the stations. So um, there's been various approaches taken to this sort of issue because a lot of them um, just showed up and started offering bikes. Like for example, in San Francisco, there were companies that did that. Um, so uh, you know, in San Francisco, they issued cease and desist orders. They uh, impounded the bikes because they didn't have a permit to operate. Um, but eventually, they they gave themselves the regulatory authority over it and were subsequently basically sued by Motivate. Um, because they were violating the exclusive franchise agreement. So, um, but we are working on dockless bike share. Um, so that may be something in the future. Um, you know, we're sort of in planning, negotiation, mm -hmm. trying to figure out uh, a, a system that might work for us in Oakland. So, the so line bikes are showing up here in Oakland, by the yeah, way, quite yeah. a bit, they and are. they're just sitting for Perfect days too. in location. So, in. I think yeah. the Alameda doesn't have a good. They don't have a good GPS signal on them or something because they're not finding them. Well, also, and you just have a line scooter. You're smooth with the line That's scooter. They're brand new, yeah. You just pick the electric scooter. Rocket, so. They have those yeah. in Santa Monica, and yeah. there's a big controversy there. They have, they're black, and they have them all over the sidewalks. Yeah. They're just everywhere. And what yeah. they do is people ride them all day long, and then at night, the company comes and scoops them all up, charges them, and then early, early in the morning, they drop them back off in all these sidewalk locations. Mm -hmm. The thing is that the parents of a lot of the young kids have given the app on, put the apps on their kids' phones with their credit card information because all you do is like go by with your app and, and it unlocks the scooter. So there's like 12-year-old kids and oh, it's it's they're on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, sorry, was um, just yeah, a, was there was there a question that I didn't answer? Did. No. Okay, so sorry. Go ahead. Oh, just in regards to the. Um, suggested about the dockless. I mean that I do see some like uh what's it it's called utility companies get the right to have a like single contract. Franchise. I see some value to that in terms of the biking just as a user. Um like in Wash I lived in Washington DC for a couple of years and it's had bike share for a while. You know, dock bike share and so they've got this critical mass in terms of the number of people using it and the number of docks they have such that it's very dependable to know that you're going to be able to go to your dock and get a bike and also drop your bike somewhere. And that's really useful, right? Um, so I, I mean, so we've yet to see with the dockless bikes, but my worry with having both or having them three different companies would be that, you know, you can't, whichever one you sign up for, there just aren't, it's not much available, you can't necessarily find a bike. Yeah. Um, Washington actually has both, both now. They have the dock based and the dockless oh. kind of all operating in the same area. And, and BART actually has a non-exclusive agreement with Motivate, so we can allow dockless bike share on to, to park on our property. But they can only go from one BART station to another. They can't. Then they might as well take BART. They can't stop in between, yeah. Um, so sorry, there are, uh, just to finish answering that question, there are, there are disadvantages and advantages to dockless. So disadvantages, you know, the bike can be left anywhere. It depends on the user and their ed level of education about knowing where to park it properly. So sometimes bikes are being being parked in improper places. Um, so that's a potential disadvantage. Um, you know, they're less durable. One of the good things about the bikes that we have with Motivate is they're very sturdy, durable bikes. They're pretty safe. They don't, they're not going to fall apart on you. Um, you know, that's someone's, you know, great. so, yeah. yeah. That's um, nice. So yeah, there's you know there's strengths and weaknesses to both systems, and it's definitely something that we're thinking a lot about and evaluating right now. Um, 
It seems to me that if they divided half on one side of the street and half on the other side of the street, there would be less space needed for the docks because half is over here and half is over here. And then you, you really can open up your options much more. The other thing too, and I've already said it, but to reevaluate the um, long-standing bike racks that are there and see if there's a way to consolidate and otherwise make them more con uh, compact and free up space that way. I would encourage you to do that. Which you should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, being an ultimate optimist, um, you started out saying that the BART station was being highly used at the 25. Um, what happens if it is so popular that they actually need to do maybe another docking station there? I mean, it's the most important hub. I mean, the fact that put it BART finally is fantastic because it makes the most sense. But if they all get used, I mean, I is there already a long-term plan if, if it's so popular? Or? Um, there hasn't been any um, planning towards expanding the station at, at BART or any of the individual stations actually in Oakland. Um, that, that's, it, that problem is able to be handled through the rebalancing. So like basically in the morning, people from all around Rockridge will take go to their local bike share mm -hmm. station and they'll take a bike and then they'll bike them to Rockridge BART. Mm -hmm. And then the station will fill up at that point Motivate gets sort of a you know a message, and then they send their uh, bike train out there, and they load a bunch of bikes onto the bike train, and then they take it back to the other stations, and they do the same thing in reverse in the evening. Mm -hmm. So that um, that sort of uh, you know great problem to have of like too many people using the system can be can be addressed through just doing that faster. Right. Yeah. Um, so just quick, uh, the the one under the by the. Uh, Memorial Wall is how does the sunlight <laughs> get to the panel? So what, Motivate really did not want to actually put <coughs> the bikes there because they knew they basically have to swap the battery out um, that 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 op operates that. So it's a little bit more maintenance for them. But it, it, at, at the very beginning, I said we've evaluated more sites at Rockridge than any other BART station in Oakland, San Francisco, or, or Berkeley because we just could not find the right spot. That one was still not ideal because there was no sun there. So they'll do a mechanical sort of. They they basically swap the battery. They 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 literally just pull one out and put a new charge one in. Have you addressed anything about the proximity of the station? They seem to be two blocks apart. Where if you're going to ride a bike, you can walk to two blocks. Have you thought and about the residential bike uh, hubs that you have? You mean not you right at the station, but just a block or two away? Mm-hmm. Just yeah. that's, what it, that's why it was for the kids. Yeah, so on average, they're about more like four blocks apart. Um, if they were two really big blocks, it's possible there could be some that are two blocks apart. Um, but you need the, in order for the system to work, there needs to be a station near where people are coming from or where they're trying to go. So that's why we want to have this sort of perfect density of close enough but not too many. And so it, it ends up being around four blocks is a pretty good density of stations where there will probably be one near where you're trying to go or where you're coming from. And how about residential? Having a half right in front of your house. Yeah, so people need but a station near where they live. So that particular station is, um, at that, are you talking about the Chapter and Cabor station? That's yeah. the one that I have seen. Yeah, so that station was selected because it's at the confluence of two bike boulevards, only two bike boulevards in Oakland meet there, so it's a great bike facility. Um, and there's also a lot of people that live around there and a lot of members of the bike share service that are able to use that station really close to their home. So, um, so you have that was the a few blocks you have the DMB. And then you can put it in front of the DMB. And yeah, so this is a great segue into um, my next slide. Um, so right. now that we're about to finish the bike share system, so there's two more stations that are going to go down in the next couple of weeks. Um, and so at that point, um, that will be off my plate. And then we can start to take a look at all the stations that are existing in Oakland and evaluate whether there's any that we want to move. So we're going to take into account things like your comments, uh, how well the stations are being used, the, um, the location, the coverage, um, all those things, and um, potentially move some of them. So that's, Ooh, that's cool. next on the plate after we uh, finish installing the whole system. Thank who, you. Who would they contact? Uh, 
because I have a friend uh, mm -hmm. who owns a furniture store right near I know College him. in Claremont. You yeah. certainly do. I've talked to him many times. Yeah, and he's not real happy about you taking two spaces of parking in front of his uh, location. How, how is he going to get into the mix to actually...